listening to tjb.co.uk. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. Um, it's late again. And um, I'm in... Um, actually, I'm in our OpenSim installation as this... I thought this was hilarious. This is the latest um, <clears throat> download from OpenSim Creations um, called the okay, not the very latest, but um, one of the latest ones called the Cactuar. <laughs> yes, I, I, I mean, I, I just, I just found this. Very, very funny. Um, it's actually, if you look at it, it's it's a pretty basic construct. I mean, it's all cylinders and um, quarter tori, tori. Tori, however you might pronounce them. So it's 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 just made of basic prims, but it just looks so good that I, I'm just very and it's it it looks really funny to me. So I I'm just really really happy with this. Not that I I particularly enjoy being a, a cactus it just it comes with this hilarious animations too um, but I didn't really want to talk about the cactus today um, what I wanted to talk about is I have been we Ali and me have been listening to a lot of the meta reality podcasts they are on um, metarealitypodcast.com um, It says here it's a weekly podcast, but it's really actually coming out like... Well, maybe lately it's been coming out every week, but before that, it was... It's not always been weekly, uh, in, in you know. I mean, it's been kind of irregular there, before like October two thousand eleven. And um, I don't want to. I don't want to go in, into great detail about what uh, what annoys me with 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 the podcast because I mean, there's some things that really annoy me, but. Uh, but I really don't want to go ahead and and talk bad about people. Um, but um, so it's it's you know uh, this is not about the people making the podcast. It's about some kind of a general assumption or I don't know, general mindset that comes through listening to that, that is to me strange um, because the main if 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 meta reality podcast has a theme the theme is the theme is how do we get second life to be amazing and um, the answer in most cases is 
has something to do with the with the lab. It has something to do with um, getting Linden Lab to work a certain way, or do a certain thing, or or not do a certain thing, or think a certain way. It's just and and you know that it's it's pretty obvious. This is uh, basically the low hanging fruit of of um, talk about Second Life. But um, I think it, it's it's rather beside the point. Um, Second Live is three things, I think. One thing is it's this virtual world for people to meet. In that respect, it is not the on only virtual world there ever is. I mean, there are a lot of virtual worlds with a lot of different audiences, a lot of different onsets. <clears throat> and um, it, this is really not the exciting part of it. And... The second thing that Second Life is, is that it is the product of the company, Linden Lab. It actually, you know, I mean, this is kind of totally um, beside the point, but I always wondered is why they call it Linden Lab, because probably because they themselves call themselves Linden Lab. The company itself is called Linden Research Incorporated. Um, so I I don't know why everybody calls it Linden Lab. Probably because Linden Research didn't sound that great. But then, you know, if they wanted to be called Linden Lab, they should have named themselves Linden Lab in the first place. But this is beside the point. I mean, Second Life is the product of Linden Lab and is um, <clears throat> therefore linked to the fate of Linden Lab. So, it kind of needs to be treated like a product, needs to be treated, needs to be sold it needs to be advertised, it needs to be managed, and um, not necessarily be improved on, but more or less adjusted to the current situation. Um, that means you... a lot of improvements that are being made to products are actually not really improvements but adjusting them to the expectations of a certain audience or the perceived expectations or maybe the expectations that a future audience that the company wants to win will have so um, to Give an example, bad example, but it's yeah, just something that just comes to my mind. Um, the Second Life launched a project in 2007, 2008 called Second Life Enterprise, which was aimed at, the name tells it, enterprise customers who would want their own Second Life for their company. So it was kind of a separate grid for uh, company customers um, at a very um, individual price, and um, you know what this, this cactua can do? I mean, it can like root, sit on ground, then it's gonna come on, sit on ground. It's rooting. Um, now, um, 
it was, you know, aimed at, second, at, at, at enterprise customers. And this is not because Second Life had so many enterprise customers who wanted to have that product, product um, but because Second Life wanted to appeal to enterprise customers who might want this product um, without really knowing if anyone is going to come forward or if enough enterprises are coming forward to really buy it. Um, so this is an adjustment that didn't n improve Second Life at the very least. I, I mean, it's the same Second Life. It's just, uh, you know, a separate one. Uh, same software, basically, just walled off. And um, But it was an adjustment made at the time for a certain perceived demand. Um, where was I going with this? Yes, right. So this is the way products are being treated. Um, and the third thing, and that is really the most important thing, is that Second Life is an idea. It's the idea of an interconnected virtual space that is customizable by all participants, that is where you retain where you can create and retain your own identity your own appearance and um virtual properties virtual goods and um experience this environment with other users so, um, in this regard, it's not necessarily about the graphics that need to be improved on, because the graphics, at its core, don't have anything to do with this concept of um, of the metaverse. Um, in fact. Um, I grew up on a C64, Commodore 64. Um, I understand that this might not tell much to people um, in the States. In Europe, it was quite a big success. Um, basically, everyone I knew had one. And um, I was six years old when I got my first um, C64. And one of the earliest really great games for the C64 was Maniac Mansion by Lucas Arts, um, which was just a, a really funny made uh, point and click adventure. It was one of the first point and click adventures where you could interact with the environment by clicking on a command and then clicking on the object and your sprite, your your avatar your character would do a certain thing about it and it looked really 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 primitive i mean it, you know c64 had um um 16 colors and um a very low resolution thing and and it just was all blocky and 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 stuff and things moved like from they were from lag hill and but you know it looked it, it it was this promise of a space inside the computer that could be accessed by the person sitting in front of it and uh when i played this the one thing i remember the one thing i thought about was how cool would it be to really not have this confined space, you know, because um, <laughs> you can only go so far around the Menzen until you reach its its boundaries. What? How cool would it be to have this really large area that is populated by many people, not only like sprites in a computer game that are just an AI that will respond to in a certain way, but other people 
and um, experience this landscape. And um, <laughs> in fact, Lucas Arts made later um, this thing come true. I just didn't know about it until I, you know, was. <clears throat> into Second Life already for a while. Um, it was called Habitat. Um, um, and um, apparently came out in 1986. And it was not the biggest success at the time. But it was really the thing that I thought was cool. Um, where players could run on a C64 even um, experience other players in the game through the computer. Um, it looked crappy. I mean, the, the very fact that they needed to, you know, have the cover of the game painted um, speaks volumes. Um, but yeah, this is the way I thought that this is the concept of a virtual environment, of, a, of, a, of the metaverse. And um, this metaverse is not strictly linked to the fate of Second Life. So, you know, even if Second Life goes all the way down the drain, um, we'll still have the technology, we'll still have the idea, and uh, we still have even um, a way to emulate it ourselves. OpenSim is the weapon of choice in this case. Um, so, the woe and uh, the prosperity of the metaverse does not lay entirely on the shoulders of Linden Lab. So, what I don't understand is this obsession with Linden Lab and how everything they do or don't do or ignore or the way they treat stuff is existential. Perhaps my my um, perspective on this is just blurred by the fact that I'm not entirely vested into Second Life, but... Um, have seen what OpenSim can do already and I, I actually I mean this is a criticism that I uh, I think I can fairly say is that I think OpenSim is pretty misrepresented on on Metaverse Reality Podcast um, <clears throat> it sounds like when they talk about it, that OpenSim is this wasteland of uh, crap. And um, that's just not what it is. It's just not the way I experience it. That's just not the way it looks, feels, or, or um, performs to me. In fact, every time I go to Second Live, I am really amazed at the lag that there is and um, at the way things do not work the way I expect them to work. But okay, I mean, different perceptions and all that. Um, but really, Second Life is like the, the AOL. I mean, Second Life had this this ambition to become the 3D web but just like the 2D web the world wide web 
is not run by one company and could never be run by one company ever it would not be the World Wide Web as we know it so could the 3D Web not be run by one company uh, it, it's just not, not viable um, the best Second Life will ever be is the 3D AOL the 3D company that will that 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 pushed the virtual world the, the metaverse forward um, and made it accessible to a, a wider range of users and kind of served as the ambassador of the the metaverse to come um, because for all the crappiness that AOL is, um, the one thing that is that they really can that, that should never be underestimated is that it's the way how they promoted the internet, promoted the World Wide Web, and promoted themselves with it at, by doing this, of course. But um, this pushed the adoption of the internet a, a long ways um, into the mainstream. So, yeah, I mean, we do need Second Life in that we, that that adoption might spread faster and further. But um, we don't need Second Life, we don't need Linden Lab to exist. And, um, just like AOL, Second Life has its limitations that are just that are that stem from its being part of a company product. Because things like interconnected virtual worlds will never or would never be deployed by the one grid that rules them all. Um, because it, basically what Linden Lab is interested in is getting people to pay tier. Um, people to rent land, which is basically people getting people to rent web space on their servers. Um, running their unique set of software. So, once Second Life would open to to connect to other worlds, people would actually have the option to not only rent land on Linden Lab s servers, but also on other people's servers, and suddenly there would be competition. And suddenly there would be um, prices and um, suddenly people could realize that holy crap the three hundred dollars a month that I paid for my um, shared server uh, like quarter server or whatever it is now quarter core of, of a server is like way overpriced because this is the situation in, o in open sim where you suddenly have prices that are a tenth or less of what Second Life charges for a region. And um, it, it's, it's pretty easy to see where this will go and that this is not um, in the interest of Linden Lab at all. So basically they will do what AOL will ha has done, uh, trying to lock their users into their own services and trying to keep them from the wide ranges of the World Wide Web. And um, to the people who still believe that OpenSim is this wasteland of crap, this is just the way the web looked in like 1993. It was a, a wasteland of crap of people um, making their their 
hobby websites with flashing GIF graphics and um, it's not necessarily the metaverse that will or it's not necessary that the metaverse will stay that way the metaverse will be evolving it will grow far beyond the reaches of second life um, and it will be awesome it will be awesome it will be much awesomer than second life ever was and ever can be um, due to its own limitations and um, it will be interconnected it will not just be the one world the one grid that is you know responsible for all your woes it will not be the one company to turn to for any feature you want to have or any problem you have and um, this too will be awesome Thank you very much.